Hello and uh, welcome to blog number two, um, week ending 6th of March 2022. Um, first of all, a big thank you to anybody who watched all my waffle stuff um, last week. Um, as I mentioned before, it's, it's really a blog um, for family, something to be left behind. But I really want to change um, how I am currently at the moment get back to more like I uh, I was in the past um, many of you won't even have seen that because um, I started to um, get more involved with Mainmeister and Panther and a number of other channels um, during the pandemic um, I've always been there um, I've always been in the background um, typing away giving my opinion whatever um, that's because I always thought of myself as a person that wanted to give encouragement but also um, give another insight um, that's what I'm hoping in some ways um, that's what you guys might do um, give another insight maybe into things that I'm looking at maybe I'm looking at things a little bit wrong um, and I'm trying to keep to a format um, but it's really a format that tells you of like a weekly diary so it's not really going to be about anything other than what's affected me this week and to uh, try and uh, adjust myself um, one of the things you might find um, this week is I've got my hair cut eventually um, that was a weight off my mind haha <laughs> ba boom but um, you know it, it's going to be a gradual process because I'm, I'm, I'm not right yet there's the things going on at work and all sorts of stuff but um, I started off sort of like last week with some things that go on at the news because as I mentioned um, I listen to the news a lot when I'm going to work um, so thinking about this blog um, I started to write down some notes so if you do see me looking down a little bit it's only because I've got to remind myself because I started writing this stuff down Monday <clears throat> and of course the big news item is uh, Russia Ukraine and I told you last week how makes my blood boil a, a, an awful lot but I should never lose focus on the fact that uh, the poor the poor people that this is affecting um, so um, the Russians have started targeting civilian houses uh, they've captured the second largest city um, blown up gas lines um, all sorts of stuff like that and uh, of course one of the biggest ones is the nuclear reactor that they started to target um, that's brought um, a lot of people into focus on just what that might mean if they shell that and it blows up um, this now then becomes something bigger than a, a Ukraine Russian conflict which I have always believed it, it is anyway this is a uh, Putin's doing and um, I've many people actually will think how does this end and I, I don't see this ending in any other way other than a coup getting him out I don't think any conflict is going to do anything it's going to be an internal get him out um, but that's just my opinion um, and my thoughts are with all those families at the moment I, I think it's atrocious um, so what else was in the news fuel um, that's a big one for me because obviously I still travel to work. Um, I rarely work from home. It's just too crowded. And by the way, through this whole process, you'll see all these piles diminish down. And that's because I've been so in the doldrums, I can't be bothered, I suppose is the word. But um, diesel went up 10 p a litre. Um, I think it's like 161, 165 now. Um, I need to walk past the petrol station when I um, go for my walk. You can see I've got my coat on, ready to go for my five mile walk. Um, and believe it or not, the barrel of crude went up and within 24 hours, every petrol station bumped itself up. And then every news station was uh, reminiscing about why is it that when crude oil goes down um, in price we don't see the benefit um, for weeks sometimes months other times um, the uh, RAC 
gave some type of answer to that in relation to the fact that you have to look at these things over yearly prices. Um, I still think that they're just profit profit hungry, direct just 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 total profit related stuff. Um, but it's funny that the last time I thought about fuel, I was having a conversation. Um, with some American friends because um, I always told them do you know what the best thing that happened when I was going on holiday and I was going on a drive drive um, drive holiday um, their fuel was just so much cheaper and I said the other thing that I couldn't get around, my head around was you always list the gallon price we list the litre price and um, all your road systems on your motorways highways and uh, are by street name and all of ours are numbers, you know, so Junction 11, Junction 10, they've got street names. Sometimes I didn't even know I was entering a city when I was uh, doing my drive around California and Florida. So, and Ohio even. So, that's an interesting one. I might, might put to, to touch upon some of the holidays, because they really did uh, cheer me up. I used to go two or three times a year, and it was always America, and I'll give a reason for that as well shortly. Um, so on top of all of the war stuff that's going on, the Olympics. So the Olympics have started the, for the Paralympics. Um, a big shame about this, but obviously Russia and Ukraine step into this, as does a lot of sport. Um, now the Olympics is built around seven values, and those values are respect, courage, determination, inspiration, equality, excellence, and friendship. There we are, seven. And when you look at that, you can un you can understand a little bit about why Russia has been excluded. Friendship, um, equality, um, respect. Some of those have definitely crossed the line. Um, and it, although it's nothing to do with the people that are entering this event, they represent the country. That's the Olympics. Um, a little bit less when you consider football and at the moment Chelsea are in the news because they've got a Russian owner um, you've got to understand that the sooner this war gets over the, the sooner we can get back to being this unity that we need to be um, so that was interesting to me as well and then the last thing about the news was and this affected me a little bit because my father really uh, but Shane Warne died. He's a cricketer, um, spin bowler, and he died at the age of 52 on Friday. Now, I mentioned that more towards my family because um, my family do know that my dad was well into his sport, but he was a cricketer. Um, he played for the county and, and so forth. Um, my dad, therefore, introduced me to sport, um, firstly football, then cricket, and then a number of others um, that I learnt myself, you know, um, badminton and squash and golf, um, and rugby, of course. But my father's big passion was angling and cricket, um, and then football third, I would say, in that order anyway. And he introduced me to a cricketer called Tony Gregg. Now... Um, that's a cricketer so far in the past you a lot of you guys I've just probably alienated but Shane Warne was a young cricketer and a fantastic um, talent and to die at 52 that's <laughs> that's just it knocked me for six is is, it, is a term so and it made me think about my dad because I know that if he'd have heard that on the news we'd have been talking about it and then it had been talking about some of the matches and uh, some of the rivalry between um, Australia and England in regards to the Ashes and so forth. So it made me think about my dad a lot, made me sad, but it also made me happy. Um, I'm more into the, my heroes, Muhammad Ali and, and so forth. Um, and I could talk about those probably another time. But... Um, it was nice to think about my dad this week um, he's never far from my thoughts but that was great and there's not much to report about work um, when it comes to work um, I've mentioned that I, I know a little bit more about what's going on with my career 
and it was supposed to be on Tuesday. Um, that changed. So I was told that it would be possibly up to Tuesday that I'd be going into a meeting. Um, that's the email that I got. And when I got the, the meeting invitation, um, it basically said that it needed to be in London. Um, it, if I wanted my union representative present, um, an invite would go out. Um, the time would be 3.30 in the afternoon um, and for me to email back. And I happened to mention, I said, I didn't know it was going to be Tuesday. I thought it was any time up to Tuesday, so I didn't have a definite date. Um, Travelling to London would be difficult with my health because um, I've got problems with my knee and my back. Um, I'm a carer for my mother, so if I was to travel to London, um, 3.30 with a, a meeting that could go for an hour and a half to two hours and then get in the underground and then get in the train back. Really, I, I wanted to see if they could ever make it comfortable for me to have it closer to me. I would make them very comfortable coming to the office I work at. Um, teams would be, um, uh, uh, you know, a, a meeting over, over video conference was an option, but I would prefer it face to face. For which I pretty much got a hard answer, no, 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 no. Um, which seems to indicate to me that I'm not going to get too far with this meeting. Um, so how does that make me feel? Down. The meeting is now set for the 22nd of this month, which means I'll be pondering and thinking about that all the way up to the point, which is another mental torture for me. But um, I live in hope that I gave a good case and that they will see that they've had two years to sort out finding me a position in this large, larger company and that they have made the changes after the point I was too bit across, which is one of the key points that I'm trying to get at. Um, so, yeah, not a great start to the week. War, work, people dying. So what else? has been happening this week well um i have little i have looked at some of the roundups that have been going on with the commodore 64 um one of my big computers that i solely miss an awful lot i wish miss those days should i say can't miss the damn machine i've got um emulators and i've actually got the machine still present um but there was a couple of demos that have been moving on there's one called captain ishtar apparently um when I first looked at the little video that I watched on YouTube about it, it looked very much like Tarzan or Flash Gordon. Um, not particularly great games. In fact, actually, Flash Gordon I really only liked because of the music, which was Rob Hubbard. Talk about him in plenty of other blogs shortly. Um, but it looked the, the more interesting of the others that I'm going to be mentioning. There was another one called Slam Siblings. Now... Apparently a demo's just been released of Slam Siblings and it's based around a Commodore 64 version of Super Smash Brothers. Um, I've never been a big fan of Super Smash Brothers. Um, I, the only thing I can say about it is this program has done a pretty damn good job. The scrolling, you know, the characters look pretty good. Colour schemes, quite nice. There's no sound at the moment, so couldn't comment on that. Um, but from from the outset it looks like it's promising for people that like that type of game Sh shame it's just not one i'm not <laughs> particularly interested in um and then apparently there's a project going on to make the commodore 64 version of street fighter 2 better well you couldn't make it worse i, don't, I dare say um i don't see too much movement on it apparently it's more playable um i find it a hard ask to make street fighter 2 work on a Commodore 64 because Street Fighter 2 is one of those games where it's big and bold imagery and it's and the way that it's supposed to play was its pulling point um, along with its sound. Um, the Commodore 64 you know with its technology way in the past is pretty difficult and there's been other programmers that have thought about other ways of making a game, I'm, um, I'm pretty sure if you watch any of Mainmeister's videos and, and a number of other people, 
videos that are out there they've all talked about the fact that if you can't do something as close to the arcade original then make it your own but keep the essence of what it is um, I've only ever seen people trying to keep how it how Street Fighter 2 is in the arcade and try and port it across this one's no different um, and to me it, it doesn't work um, but there you go so that was sort of like the roundup of the Commodore 64 stuff uh, because the last Commodore 64 game that I played um, that came out a couple of weeks ago was Puzzle Bobble and that's divided um, apparently with um, in regards to whether you like that type of game or not I remember that as being the last game that I bought for my Neo Geo before I sold it loved the game um, and and therefore seeing a C64 version with the SID renditions of the tunes which are madly mind worm in your head when you listen to them um, cheered me up no end so absolutely fantastic that and the last thing I've been watching on YouTube other than all of my friends by the way I watch all of your stuff first um, is ETA Prime now I don't give out shout outs but I'm mentioning this person because he does roundups of hardware and and and, um, and software um, consoles and all sorts of things um, that I'd never be able to pick up and he gives me an insight now I, I'll, I'll give you an example of this um, Mainmeister and I talked about buying old hardware from factory um, from from um, offices going bust yep so you know the offices go bust they've bought all these Dells they've bought all these HP's they're all desktop machines um, they go bust they go into auctions and you can buy these machines really for a pittance these days and then you can update them so just to give you an example you could buy a very small form factor that's an SFF version of a desktop and you can up its processor put a little bit more memory and put a solid state drive in it that's a drive that's uh, not mechanical and fast and you've got a perfect emulation machine um, most of these small form factors now have a HDMI out um, so basically they can fit underneath your your TV and you've got a little media center in much the same way that the Xbox is a media center and the PlayStation is a media center only more for emulation take the operating system off or choose your operating um, system of choice um, put Linux on it or one of the major front ends to arcade machines launch box um, you know coin ops lots of those and it'll boot up and you've got yourself a nice little machine now that excites me a little bit because being an asset manager um, I get to know about some of these sales quite 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 easily and um, in the past when I was dealing with my previous um, company the CRC with the probation service um, a lot of stuff was being chucked out some of it did not have any data on it whatsoever I got directorship approval to say is it possible that I can just take one of these machines instead of binning it um, and I did so basically I've got a couple of um, machines that I've bought on eBay in the past and bought from got, got from work and I can turn those into um, arcade machines and I'm thinking about doing that and that made me think about dual booting so this week I've turned this machine that I've got now um, into two types um, it's got a Windows profile selection now so that I can choose one for when I want to do normal work on it and two when I want to just do emulation because some of my emulators don't use multi-core and that means that I can turn cores off so I can uh, basically choose the profile that I want turning off services that I don't need some networking if I don't want any networking and basically the machine will be faster it's an i7 processor anyway so it's fast um, but it does mean that the emulation will be slightly faster um, but I've also virtual machined it um, to a point where I can now go to what they call the base metal mode if anybody wants to know what that is it means I can go to the BIOS 
So I can now dual boot this into XP if I want, Vista if I want, um, and so forth, and and basically start fiddling about with things. Um, I did do that once before on a server. Um, I've still got the server upstairs. I might get that out, but I think I forgot the passwords, and of course, I'd have to um, patch it all up. So that's a bigger project. And just before I move forward or off of all of that, um, I did find out that uh, in January, Vista was 15 years old. Um, just to give you a bit of reminiscing about that, sorry, moving away a little bit, um, that was my first copy of Windows XP, which came in a lovely gatefold sort of like uh, cover. And then when Vista came along, I haven't got my copy of Vista because I couldn't find it, it came in this type of packaging. Now, the interesting thing about buying an operating system is they came with these booklets. And they gave you far more information in regards to what all the icons do. Just to give you an insight. Um, see if I can do it quickly. Ooh, don't think I'm going to be able to. No. Didn't think that would work, but basically they went into all the menus and told you what each of these do. But um, just to give you an insight, they don't do that anymore. Um, everything, you know, with um, your USB sticks and your hard copies of stuff. Um, you learn it yourself. Windows 11, perfect example, by the way. So, lastly, it's uh, what's happened this week, what I bought. Yay! You know, all the things that have come through the post that have basically made me broke this week. Um, so, I touched upon last week, oh, let me get these out of the way, that um, Hatchet Part Works are doing that lovely thing that they do every year of doing a part-related um, set of books, um, rip-off, <coughs> but um, I did say that the second issue would be out, it is, and it would be cheaper than all the other issues it is i think it's 6.99 i told you it'd be the avengers it is the avengers um i didn't mention that by the way the spine makes up a picture when you put them all out if that interests you great if that's a selling point but but to me everything that i mentioned last week is true unless you've never bought one of these part works they don't generally work out price wise um I recommend you don't buy them. Um, you're never guaranteed you're going to get every book. Um, I'm still missing books from the first set that they tell me we definitely will give you every book, um, Del Boy. And to be quite honest, I'm still waiting, and that's four years. I think they've breached upon their um, we will get you every book being a subscriber. So as far as I'm concerned... Um, in a couple of weeks, I'll probably make the, the decision to contact them and say, you've breached the agreement. It's cost me an absolute fortune. I've got 244 of 250 of your books, which means I haven't got the whole set. Um, I'm going to send them all back to you and you can give me all the money back. Um, and we'll see uh, where we go with that. Because um, I think I've got a legal standpoint on that. We'll see. Um, I certainly wouldn't lose any sleep on sending them all back i've got plenty of books and comics and stuff to read um so there's that okay now i told you about omnibuses now i have no control over omnibuses being released and i pre-order them so it's unfortunate that my money took a bit of a whack this week because two books um came out um the first one is savage sword of conan volume six so you can imagine i've got five of these um i own there's two sets of these books one's called savage sword and the other one's called the marvel years which are all the classic tales one's in color one's in black and white these are the magazine black and white versions they were aimed at adults which means that the drawings inside of them and the content of the story is aimed towards adults which means the form factor of the drawings a bit risque um didn't bother me um <laughs> i just love artwork now john buscema is the reason that i bought the savage sword of conan range um to me 
he is second to Kirby. In fact, he was second. He was third to Kirby on the Fantastic Four book. Um, just to give you a bit of history there, um, and they consider his run pretty much quintessential. So, John Buscema, if you, I mean, if you only have to just look at his work, and it's just this. The pencil lines are just absolutely fantastic. Um, so, Savage Sword of Conan, Volume Six. It came in at one hundred and twenty-five dollars. I told you last week that generally you halve that. Um, I get a bit of a discount because I pre-order it. So if you do the math, you'll see that I paid a little bit more than the book that I showed you last week. I think this one came at £62, uh, something like that. Um, and so that came this week, and I went, oh dear, that's my bank balance this this month, taking a, taking a bit of a whack. Two days later, I had another book arrive. Oh, you know, and you go, I've just started reading that X-Men book from last week, and now I've got this one to read. Well, this one's more in line to what I normally read. It's uh, Ultimate Spider-Man Volume 1. Um, I'd love to give you a tale about Ultimate Spider-Man, but basically, this book came out in the 2000s as a comic. Um, it ran for around about 150 issues before they changed totally what the Ultimate was about in regards to Spider-Man and the, and the universe he comes from. Um, this is a retelling. Um, it is the second time that Marvel have had a coexistence of a writer and artist go beyond 100 issues. So this one is Brian Michael Bendis as the writer and Mark Bagley as the artist. Um, I shied away from the first printing of this, and I should never have done, because I had the comics. And I wasn't buying so much stuff. And then when it was a second printing was announced, it's taken a year and a half since its announcement for it to come out, which is, I mean, sod's law, if you want me to swear a little bit, that it comes out the same week as another big omnibus. Um, this particular book is $125. Yeah, do the maths. 60-odd um, pounds. Um, but very happy for this one because it goes in line with my other Spider-Man books, much more in line with what I normally buy. And then we come to what's come through film-wise. Now, I'll do this in a very quick order, okay? So the first Steel book is The Last Jewel. Um, this is a new film, came out earlier this year, um, late last year. Uh, Ridley Scott, and his one of his first films was The Jewel. Um, this is not a continuation, but more retelling with extra bits added on. Um, if you've ever seen a Ridley Scott film, he's very visual. Um, as a film, um, I have seen it. Um, I liked it, but it's not quintessential Ridley Scott anymore. Ridley Scott has changed to the point where there are films now where I'll be critical about him. Um, I liked it more than I hated it, is the best way to, to come across that. Um, then I'm re-buying all of my uh, of Marvel books, these Mondo sets. <coughs> so this one came along, Avengers Infinity War, which means that I will get the second one of these uh, probably next week. It will come through. Um, I think what I'm probably going to have to do then is probably sell the old set. Um, there's a lenticular set that I've got. There's the normal set. I'll probably sell the normal set. It's just not worth keeping. Um, so that will be gone. And then this one cheered me up the end. Tom Hanks in The Green Mile. It's a deluxe set. It comes with books and postcards and all sorts. And if anybody knows about the Green Mile, there is always a discussion on which one's the best, the Green Mile or the Shawshank Redemption. I've had to think really hard, but um, I still think the Green Mile is probably edges the Shawshank Redemption. But that's just personally me. And I think that's more to do... Um, it's a little bit more diverse of what goes on um, than, than, than the Shawshank Redemption and its whole storytelling. Um, that's that does not take away what the Shawshank Redemption is. That's a fantastic film. Um, 
go and get that. And then I was in town yesterday, and oh dear, I I saw something on Denard, and it was in a sale, and I bought the Ten Commandments. Um, it's its 65th anniversary. What does that mean when you get to 4K? Um, this is one of those films where the American film industry have restored it from scratch. So this one does look immaculate. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. That's The reason I know that is because I had the 4K um, standard release. Uh, this is the steel book. It replaces that. Um, I've already got rid of the, the 4K standard edition of it. Um, so as far as I was concerned, I had to buy that. Um, what is there to end on? And it's a little bit late, a little bit longer. Um, I've had some lovely comments made. Thank you so much for the comments. Um, I love a debate and so forth. Um, so Ox, Ox asked me um, about uh, what my first collection was. And I had to um and ah about this a little bit because what is a collection? Um, a collection is more than one, isn't it? Um, now, if you go back to computers that I've had and computers that I've seen, um, I go back to the Commodore PET days and uh, Apple IIEs. And I remember getting a disc full of games. And that's a collection, isn't it? So you could say that was my first collection. But no, I don't think that's a, a good enough answer for you, Ox. So um, I moved on and I had a ZX80 and a ZX81. I had a VIC-20 and a number of machines. And I dare say the VIC-20 was when I started uh, as a collection because I couldn't afford the tape drive. And, but I could get hold of cartridges quite, quite cheap. Now, I won't say how I got those cartridges cheap, but um, we lived in a street where um, basically there was the Air Force Base um, rented out houses. Um, so I had a bit of a bigger pile that I could actually um, go against and cartridges don't use um, too much of a difference in regards to the, the image that's coming out PAL and NTSC. Um, it was a bit easier to manipulate so I was able to get PAL cartridges and NTSC cartridges. The reason for that is is that the American Air Force Base has what they call a BX Center um, and they had PAL versions of the cartridges and the American Air Force people that, were, that lived in our street donated them to me because they knew that I didn't have too much you know other than playing board games you know Buckaroo and so forth. So VIC-20 was probably my first big collection of games and it wasn't that big because that soon turned into Spectrums and Commodore 64's tapes. And then he goes, wow, whoosh, up there. But um, if you want to know, a picky answer would be the first one is Pet Invaders and all the pet stuff that was on my disc. And the proper answer would probably be the VIC-20 onwards. Okay. Um, then Mainmeister, Alan, um, gave me a question. Sod he is. Um, and he wanted to know, um, if I had to choose um, films or games, um, there was one other, I think it was music, which would I choose? And I could only choose one. Had to think about this. Oh, it was comics. Sorry. They uh, got it right. And the simple answer to that one, after deliberating for about 30 seconds, no, sorry, I did actually do more time than that. Um, I chose video games um, and the reason for that is I think that even if I had 50 films and I had 50 comics once I've read through them after I've watched even my favorites out of those 50 I'd be down to knowing the script um, when it comes to computer games okay I'd probably get uh, much better than Alan at games haha <laughs> my little dig no um, I still probably wouldn't learn all the patterns. They'd still give me something to aim at, even if it's a high score. Um, even if it's seeing the next screen, if it was some type of scrolling game. If it was some text adventure, I probably wouldn't get to the end of it. Um, from that point of view, computers and their games would be the choice. 
I hope that answers a number of those questions. Now, there probably was a couple of questions that came in just as I'm filming this. Apologies. Um, I will go back, I will answer, and I will put it into the next one. And I hope there has been some spark of something for you guys to deliberate on. Um, maybe think of a question for me. Maybe expand upon something where you think my opinion is wrong. Great, please, throw it all at me. And um, thank you so much for this journey I'm on. Um, I'm hoping maybe that the haircut and um, talking about some of these things and maybe even my voice sounds different, um, that I'm starting to feel a little bit better. Um, it will be a slow process. But uh, until next week, um, thank you so much for, for, for watching this waffle. And for, to my family, um, you now know a little bit more about the stuff that you can sell. Anyway, bye-bye.